I'm Celine Wise, reporting for Kids First, and today it's my privilege to be talking with Tony Bancroft, the voice director for the new film Red Shoes and the Seven Dwarves. Hey, Celine, thank you for having me. It's good to be here. You're very welcome. Welcome, Mr. Bancroft, and thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk with me. Absolutely, no problem. I got time. I love talking about animation. Me too. <laughs> What about this modern fairy tale appealed to you and drew you to work on this film? I, I think for me, it was um, once I found out about it, I really asked the producers and directors to be a part of it because I loved um, being a father myself of girls. Uh, I love the really pro image uh, uh, message about it, you know, that it's not about who you are on the, uh, the outside, it's about who you are on the inside and that character matters and heart matters. Um, and that's the journey of Snow White in this version. And it's also got a lot of comedy to it. It's fun. That's the thing that really pulled me to it. It was a fairy tale with a twist. Right, exactly. Can you explain to me exactly what a voice director's role is in an animated film? Yeah, we work, um, because the actors, when they record for an animated film, it's done early on in, in production. There's really nothing they can, they can look at. They're not in an environment. They're in a small room. They're not on a set. They're not in a costume. So they, they don't really have a lot to help them understand where they are and, and what their performance is. And what, what and they're, they're not even really playing against other actors. Like, so it's very foreign for them being in this small room recording. And what I do is I get in the room with them and I'll play the other parts against them so they can get the timing, they can get the feel of it. If they have questions about like, okay, in this scene, am I, am I emotional about these lines or am I happy about it? Or, you know, I can give them context and things like that. So I really dig deep into help them understand their location, the timing of where they're at in the film and what their part is so they can deliver the best character performance they can. That's awesome. Yeah, Did you have complex. any product? It's very, it is a very complex kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it. Did you have any production challenges making red shoes? The challenges were really just um, always a scheduling thing. And this is how it is. When you work with big Hollywood actors, you know, they're making live action movies. They're making TV shows on the side. And we're just trying to get in there to get a couple hours with them to record these, these parts. It's not a full-time gig for them. So we're always trying to squeeze into their schedule. And Gina Gershon, who, uh, you know, plays the villain in it, uh, Ravina, she's out in New York. Chloe Grace Moretz was in LA. And then I, I recorded Sam, Sam Claflin, who plays Merlin in, in uh, Fiji Islands one weekend. He was doing a shoot out there in the Fiji Islands. We had to fly out there to Fiji and get him in a, his hotel room, you know? So was, that can be the crazy part is, you know, just schedule and trying to find them and go to where they are. Wow, look at you. Yeah, <laughs> it is fun. It is fun. I know, I like it. Do you have any interesting or fun behind the scenes stories to share with us from making this film? Oh man, so many. I have so many great memories of this film because it was just such a lot of fun. And I think you see that on the screen. There's a lot of fun that happened on this movie and a lot of fun that was poured into the movie. So it's, it's a great comedy and stuff like that. So not only working with comedy people like, you know, uh, Jim Rash and Patrick Warburton, who did Kronk with me on Emperor's New Groove. It was great to record with him. But one of the memorable moments was when I had lunch with Sam Claflin. It was in between his recording uh, on that weekend in Fiji Islands that I was telling you about. Um, uh, I started drawing in my sketchbook and I drew a picture for, I think for his niece or nephew, a little Pumbaa drawing that I did. And, um, and I asked him to draw in my sketchbook and he drew a Goofy for me. And I found out that he just, he loves to draw himself and drew as a kid and I always wanted to be a cartoonist. And I thought, oh, that's cool. So I still have his drawing in my sketchbook. Very cool. How involved were you in editing the final film? I wasn't involved with that at all. The, the film's producer and director really handled that in Korea where, where it was produced and all the animation was done there too. Um, 
So I wasn't involved with that hardly at all. But if there was any retakes that came out of, because in animation, you try and keep it really fluid and um, always evolving so you can improve things. So if there was some new recordings that would come up through the editing process where they're like, oh, I wish we had this line, but we didn't really get it. And this would make this so much better if we had Chloe say this part as Snow White, then it would mean uh, me engaging with them again. They would write up a new script and I would, I would capture that, the, the vocal performance from the actor and give it to them so they can finish the film. Definitely very interesting. Yeah. I'm fascinated that your twin brother, Tom, and you have worked together on six animated films. What kind of magic existed in your household when you were growing up? <laughs> we, Tom, yeah, I'm, yeah, my twin brother also is a Disney, um, you know, um, animator and, and we grew up drawing together. That's what, that's how we were competitive as boys, you know, boys oftentimes would be competitive with sports and soccer and football, whatever. For us, it was always drawing and we would look over each other's shoulders. And, ah, that's not good enough. And, oh, draw it this way. And, um, and, um, so I think it was just kind of like iron sharpens iron, having my brother with me that also loved doing what I love to do. It just motivated us all the time. And we were always drawing. We were just, that was, that was what we did. You know, the Bancroft twins were, were the artists of the family. And we had that reputation since we were little kids. And that's how we played. That was what we did. How fun to be a twin. It is. When did you get to see the completed film and what was your reaction to it? Um, I saw it uh, somewhat more recently, probably about a month ago or so, or maybe a couple weeks ago. And I was, I loved it. I, and I was very happy to me, you know, I was on early recording the voices, but there was so much more work that was being done over the last couple of years in the animation and and the animator in me, I love seeing what an animator can bring to a performance and really make comedy moments that are funny in the room when a voice actor says something funny, but then how they can make it even funnier with the visuals or, or scenes that maybe, uh, you know, I didn't think were going to be funny. Now they're playing really funny because the animator brought something to it or a new idea. And, and to me, I, I really love what animation can give. That's what I, that's what I loved about seeing this all done is that it just it really rose, uh, uh, rose to a higher level of uh, entertainment. It's definitely super cool. What do you hope audiences will take away from watching Red Shoes and the Seven Doors? Well, it's, it's the message. I, I really, you know, like I said before, it's, it's got a great message that Snow White learns that who she is on the inside is what matters. And same with Merlin, her, her love interest in this, no spoilers but her love interest is Merlin in this. And he learns that same lesson about what's, what truly matters is his character, who he is on the inside. Um, and their, their change that happens in the story, I hope that families watch this together, have discussions afterward about how important it is, what we look like as opposed to who we are on the inside, because that's, that's what I hope people come away with. Thank you so much for talking to me today. This was awesome. Thank you, Celine. You're welcome. It was amazing learning about the production secrets and what went on behind the scenes. Be sure to look forward for Red Shoes and the Seven Doors, which is airing now on digital and on demand in homes and castles far, far away. And kids first! <laughs> Available to own on Blu-ray and DVD September 22nd, 2020. I'm Celine Wise, supporting for Kids First, and today we've been talking with Tony Bancroft, the voice director for Red Shoes and the Seven Doors. Thank you. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss my next interview or review, and those are our many other talented Kids First reporters. Bye now. Catch you next time. I'm not missing any of those. I'm liking them all. Thank You're you. Awesome. You're awesome, Celine. Great job. Red Shoes and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs>